Well, hello, scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to part three of processing my stock pot to recover gold and precious metals from it. And uh, we're pretty much where we left off in the end of part two. But just to review, in part one, I explained the purpose of the stock pot and pretty much my entire waste processing system. Um, we siphoned uh, the liquid out of the stock pot, got the, uh, the, the black solids in the bottom, um, gave them a few rinses with muriatic acid to get as much of the copper out as we could, incinerated it in my home-built compelling oven, and then we were ready for further processing, which we did in part two. And I apologize, there's some background noise in this video. Uh, I live on a farm, and the farm workers are just going to town today trying to get some stuff done between rainstorms because it's been very rainy lately. Another reason this project's been on hold. So I work outdoors, and it's been storming a lot. Anyway, in part two, um, we started treating that stuff with various chemicals to try and separate out the precious metals. And, you know, I made a few uh, beginner mistakes in that department, and I wound up with um, uh, a beaker full of liquid over here that's showing a very strong uh, um, indication for palladium in a stannous chloride test. I don't know. Maybe they were mistakes. Maybe they weren't. Um, down the road, it might be a way to go with this, you know. But also, from the bulk of the material, I managed to precipitate something that looks an awful lot like gold. It's caught on these filters in here. And I'm going to further refine that because I'm sure we've got some palladium mixed in with it, maybe some platinum too. And then from the bulk of the material that's left over here, this stuff gives a very, very strong indication for palladium and also possibly for platinum. So in the course of this video, what I want to do is... First off, we're going to start refining this stuff and see if we can turn this into some, some pure gold and uh, get a weight and see just how much gold we've got here, okay? And then I want to start working with these two chemicals here uh, and see if we can bring down the palladium, bring down any platinum that's there, and uh, see what we've got. Oh, and this beaker over here, this is the original material I was working with what's left of it caught on the filters. Um, there may be some iridium in there. There may be some rhodium in there. Hard to say what's left in there. But we're going to keep it. Not going to get rid of it. Going to keep it just in case there are some precious metals in it. Stuff that's hard to dissolve in aqua regia. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I want to do is try to uh, refine this stuff. I've been waiting on some chemicals to arrive to work with the uh, platinum group metals, and they're finally trickling in. So I think by the time we get the gold refined, we should be ready to tackle the PGMs. So let's get started. Let's get this in the fume hood and see if we can uh, refine this gold and figure out just how much gold we have here. All right, so I'm going to transfer the contents of this beaker, the filters, into a bigger beaker here just for easier processing. Let me wash everything out of this beaker. Oh, here comes some rain. So maybe we can get this started anyway. Get the fuel hook going. Put in some um, hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid, whichever name you prefer. I put in a fair amount, a little over 400 milliliters since there's a lot of paper there. There's a couple of filters, plus there's uh, some paper towel I used to uh, clean some of that black mud off my fingers because I knew it was mostly gold, so I didn't want it to go to waste. All right, let's put a little heat to this. Just a little bit, not going to get crazy with it. And we'll put some nitric acid in there and get the gold in these filters dissolving. So there's about two milliliters. And there's about four milliliters. And that's probably, well, I doubt it's going to take much more, but I can add more if necessary. So we'll stop right there for now and just let it go. 
and see what happens. All right, so let this start heating up. And uh, we'll check on it again in a bit. Okay, meantime, while this is heating up over here, I'm going to start warming this stuff up because I want to reduce its volume. In fact, let me, uh, let me take the lid off for easier evaporation so it doesn't reflux so much because I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot of palladium in here and maybe some platinum too. It's going to be easier to get those out of concentrated solutions than out of this dilute solution that's uh, about a liter and a half of liquid. If we can concentrate this down, it'll be much easier to get those metals out. So I'm going to do that. Just going to start this evaporating over low heat. Not going to boil it, just low heat. I'll also need to filter it before I do anything else with it because as it's sat, a little bit of sediment has precipitated on the solution. Could be some more gold, could be something else. But um, I'm just going to let it evaporate slowly and I'll filter it what little material is left before we go on to process it. I'm not going to set up to filter this big amount of liquid right here. Well, it's been a few minutes. This stuff is starting to warm up. It's turned orange. I see some bubbling, some fizzing. I'm pretty sure we've got uh, metal going into solution and the rain has started again. Oh, well. We do what we can between showers. Anyway, I'm just going to let this cook for now and uh, continue to get this metal in solution. Well, it's been a few more minutes, and we're getting quite a furious reaction going on in there. I've actually turned the heat down because uh, I don't want it to, to boil over or anything. There's a lot of paper pulp in there making the liquid viscous, so the bubbles it tend to well, it'll boil it over here, but uh, it looks like most of the metal's in solution, so turn the heat down some more. Uh, we're getting a fair amount of orange fumes in there. We'll just let this go until I don't see any more reaction, and uh, we'll look and see if there's still any metal in the bottom of the beaker, and uh, if there's metal there, we'll just add a little more nitric to it. If not, we will move on to the next step. All right, it's been a while longer. Um, it looks like all the metal is in solution. I have not had to add any more acid to it. The paper pulp's all falling apart. And we've just got a orangish liquid in there. A little oranger than I'm used to with Hakka Riju. We might still have some um, PGM contamination. But let's do a stannous chloride test on it. Get a little bit of it in the spot plate here. And uh, take it over on the bench and do a stannous chloride test and see what we've got in here. Okay, so here goes a little bit of stannous chloride solution. Well, that looks like a pretty strong indication for gold. I am not seeing the sort of orange-green rim around it that I was seeing uh, before in back in episode 2 when... Uh, before I precipitated the gold out of the solution. So it looks like this is a lot purer gold than what we had then. Uh, probably still, I imagine, a little bit of PGMs in there. So we'll use a different precipitating agent on this. This time we'll use copperus or iron sulfate and we'll precipitate the gold out with that. And hopefully we'll leave behind any lingering traces of platinum group metals. But first, we've got to uh, denox this stuff, cool it down and dilute it before we can filter it and drop it. So let's get it started on that. All right, so let's get this stuff denoxed. Got some uh, saturated solution of sulfamic acid here. Oh yeah, we got some uh, excess nitric in there. I knew we would. Not too much. Okay. All right. We're going to be thoroughly denoxed after all this goes in. Next, I want to get some ice and 
ice it down to cool it and dilute it. And then once the ice is all melted, we can filter it. Then we'll be ready to drop the gold again. So here we go with the ice. let that melt. In fact, I'm going to take this out of the fume hood and free up the, this hot plate burner for something else. So I'll take this out and put it up on the bench. All right, so now that I've got the gold solution out of here, freed up this burner, we're going to heat up some water. About 500 milliliters worth ought to be enough. We're gonna dissolve some coppers in that once it gets good and hot. Let that warm up. How much copper, if you ask? Well, I have found about six grams of copper per gram of gold you expect to get out of a solution. How much gold am I expecting to get out of that solution? That's a really good question. Um. I'm thinking there's probably not more than two or three grams there. It's really hard to tell when it's wet how much gold you've got in the beaker. But I'll figure that we've got five or six. I'll mix up enough copper to assume that we've got five or six in there, even though I don't think we have that much. And uh, there's really no penalty for using extra copper. The stuff's dirt cheap, so uh, and it's, it's not going to screw anything up. Just make sure we've got all the gold drops. All right, so I am notoriously bad at estimating the amount of gold when it's wet. So I think I'm going to put more coppers in here than I was originally planning. Get about 100 grams worth. All right, and I'm thinking that should be plenty. Of course, we'll do a stannous chloride test and make sure bag is about empty, but I have another one if necessary. In fact, let me just, rather than trying to spoon, whoa! Well, that was a classic error. Alright. Another one for the next blooper reel. All right, well, 95, close enough, close enough. Let me get this stuff. Clean that scale up. All right, close enough. I will not waste it. So we'll get this in that hot water and stir it up. All right. Let's see if I can get this stuff in here without spilling it again. Goes. It's the wrong color though, but it always is. Poke says your copper needs to be green. Well, that's brown, but I know how to make it green. We'll just add a little bit of muriatic acid to it, acidify it, doesn't take much, and looky there, we've got green copper. Okay, so let me pull this out off of the hot plate. This needs to be filtered before we use it to drop the gold because it's got all sorts of crud in it. Basically what I'm using here is an agricultural product to drop the gold. And they make it by dissolving iron turnings in sulfuric acid, but there's a lot of other crud that's mixed in. So we gotta filter that crud out, otherwise we're gonna make our gold really dirty and we don't want that. So I will get set up to filter this, plus I got to get set up to filter that over there too. So I got to filter both liquids before we combine them to drop the gold. Oh, I don't know if you can hear the thunder in the background. It's going to rain again. Hopefully I can get some stuff filtered and get the gold dropping before the rain starts. That would be nice. Let me get started here. 
So I'm going to gravity filter the copperus. There's some crud in the bottom, just as I expected there would be. But this should gravity filter pretty quick. And we should get a nice clean liquid out of it. But I might as well go ahead and vacuum filter the gold solution. There's a lot of paper pulp in there. So uh, this might take a little longer to filter. Get the vacuum pump going. That paper pulp will clog up the filter. Yeah, once the paper pulp comes over, I'm expecting it to clog up the filter. And filtration will slow way down. It's going to take me a while to wash all of the yellow out of the filter. So, all right, that's coming across clean. This stuff's coming across clean. Good. If anything's cloudy, I can always refilter it. Anyway. It's going to take a little while for this filtration to be done, so we'll be back when it is done. Now, you see that crud in there? That's why I filter my coppers. That's the debris that was left in the bottom. I'm not even going to put that in the filter. I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay, so we got two nice clean filtrates here. So let's combine them and get our gold precipitating. All right. Don't go anywhere. There we are. Yes, wonderfully clean, clear solution here. Looking good. This is what aqua regia with gold dissolved in it's supposed to look like. Look at that reddish brown mess I had in the last video. Hey. So, let me zoom in a little bit and we'll watch this reaction. The copperus goes in. Get a good focus here. And, well, got a whole lot of nothing going on, which is kind of odd. That is surprising. I thought I used plenty of copperus. We'll just let that sit and see if anything happens. That, uh, there should have been more than enough iron sulfate in there to precipitate the gold. Okay. It's one thing I don't like about using copperus or iron sulfate. If, you know, I don't use enough, I've got to mix up another batch. And unless I know exactly how much gold I'm dealing with, I really don't like to use it. But I'm trying to get some really clean gold here. So maybe what I'll do is, nothing happens with this in the next few minutes. I'll mix up some more, but I'll make it really concentrated this time. And uh, we'll see if we can get some gold to come out of solution. I mean, nothing going on in there. Not even getting any dendritic gold on the surface. All right. Well, I might as well start mixing up some more, I guess. Some days it seems like it just doesn't pay to get out of bed. Not only did my estimated amount of copperus not cause any gold to precipitate. Oh, and you hear the thunder. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one of those days. But uh, oh, I broke broke a hinge on the door of my fume hood, mixing up some more copperus in here and getting it cooking. So, uh, yeah, going to have to work on the fume hood here pretty soon. 
fix that. Anyway, uh, this stuff needs to dissolve. I need to acidify it, filter it, and then we'll dump it in with that stuff. If I get all that done before the rain starts, we'll see. Ay, 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 ay. Well, I guess it's going to be duct taped to the rescue until I can 3D print some new hinges. I have found that my 3D printed plastic hinges are the only thing that really stands up to the chemical vapors in here for any length of time. They've stood up for years and years, but I think they're done. I better print a new set of four and replace them all. I'll get started on that later today. But, uh, this copper is almost done, so I'm going to acidify it and start filtering it, and we'll be back when it's ready to add to that stuff, which has darkened some, I have to say, since it's sitting there. So maybe we are getting a slow reaction, but we'll see if we can speed things up by adding this stuff to it. Okay, we got weather coming in fast, so just to speed this process up, I'm going to cotton filter this directly into the gold solution, which I can see, actually, we've got some dendritic gold forming on the top, so that it, I just, I guess, didn't quite get enough in there. I have a hard time believing it wasn't denoxed enough. I put plenty of sulfamic acid in there. It wasn't much of a reaction. But I'm thinking this much more copperous ought to do the trick. So we'll just let this drip in and see what happens. So here's what I find after I come out after the rain's done. Um, we've got, well, a fair amount of gold precipitated and a little bit floating on the surface. Get rid of this funnel. And uh, maybe knock some of that gold down with a uh, spritz from the water bottle. So it can settle to the bottom too. All right. So it's hard to say how much we've got. But uh, let's see if we got it all. Let's do a uh, stannous chloride test. I get a lot of complaints from people that I don't do enough stannous chloride tests. So... We will do one here. Get some of this on the spot plate here. This liquid. And let's hit it with some stannous chloride. Well, I'll zoom in on that for you. I don't know if you can see it. To my eye, that is very slightly orange. So I'm thinking a little bit of PGMs in there, but I don't see any trace of gold. So I don't think uh, there's any gold left in solution over here. Uh, PGMs, they were supposed to stay behind in solution. So that's, that's good. All right. Exactly what I wanted. So this gold down here is probably fairly pure. So what I will do is siphon off the bulk of this liquid and we'll start cleaning up however much gold is in there and we'll get a weight on it. So like I said before, I'm going to siphon the liquid out of this beaker. I'm going to put it right into my temporary stock pot here. Yeah, there's a little bit of PGMs in this liquid, but it's not nearly enough to be worth going after. You don't want to be chasing low concentrations of PGMs. It's very frustrating. So, this can just go back in my stock pot eventually and uh, get cemented back out on copper and sometime in the future. Um, maybe I'll be able to deal with this stuff. But, uh, yeah, the, the concentration's too low. The other liquids I've got in the fume hood here, the uh, the green liquid with the palladium in it and the brown liquid with the palladium and maybe platinum in it, those are much more worth going after. They're much more concentrated, especially, uh, I'll show you here in a little bit, the brown liquid, orange-brown, 
is actually um, getting more concentrated. We're uh, evaporating it down. So I'll show you that here in a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and siphon this liquid off, and we'll be back when I'm done. All right, so here's our gold after siphoning off the bulk of that liquid. Um, it doesn't look like a huge amount of gold, but it is in a very large beaker. So, uh, plus, you know what? Not a huge amount of gold might be a good thing because I have been trying hard to keep gold out of my stock pot. Uh, trying to wring every last little bit of gold out of the liquids before they go in the stock pot by using a temporary stock pot to hold them and throwing some SMB in it from time to time and then only transferring uh, the liquid into the main stock pot after it sat in the temporary one for quite a while. And I do collect gold off the bottom of the temporary stock pot, so maybe I'm not actually getting very much into the main stock pot, which is my goal, you know? I don't want to have to go through this to collect the gold. So anyway, I'm going to transfer this into a smaller beaker and start giving it some cleanup boils in the fume hood. Um, just to keep this video from getting too long, because I've shown the cleanup boils on the gold so many times, uh, I'll go through it really quickly. All right, we are starting the hydrochloric acid boils over here. So this is, uh, it's just coming up to temperature. It's going to be a while before it's boiling. I'll give it a good boil. You can't off that liquid and then boil it in uh, distilled water a few times. As you can see over here, we are rapidly reducing this stuff. Um, we've already reduced it by, I'd say, more than a third, not quite half. And I'm just going to keep reducing it. I want to get it down to probably a quarter or less of what we had to start with. And the liquid's getting much darker as it's getting concentrated, too. That's good. We're concentrating the PGMs in there. They'll be easier to recover. Repairs to the fume hood. 3D printed some new hinges. Got them installed. Um, second pair of hinges is printing. I'm going to have to replace these over here, too, because I can see they're in just about as bad a shape and will fail soon, too. So I will replace those as well. And uh, my fume hood will be back to 100%. Okay, so let's let this stuff cook. Okay, the uh, hydrochloric acid boils are done, and we're starting the first of the uh, distilled water boils. Just starting to warm up. So we'll be back when the boils are done. We're drying the gold out. Okay, gold's drying out. We should be able to get a weight on it here in just a little bit. All right, time for a gold weigh-in. Let's see how much gold we've got. This is some really good-looking gold. It usually is after it comes out of copperus, but it doesn't look like a whole lot of gold. So let's see what we've actually got here. Yeah, not a whole lot of gold at all. But like I said earlier, maybe that's a good thing because I've been trying to keep gold out of my stock pot. I've been trying to collect every bit of it I can before it goes in there. So, okay. So, I'm processing my stockpot stuff. I don't have a lot of gold, and I have more PGMs than I was expecting. So, hey, I guess things are working. Okay, so let me put this stuff away. Not quite two grams. You know, it is less than I was expecting. I figured there'd be more than that in the stockpot, but hey, I'll take what I can get, right? And we'll go see what we've got in the way of PGMs in there, okay? All right, so I'll give you a look at why we recovered so little gold from my main stock pot and why I'm not disappointed about that. Because I've got a temporary stock pot and this is where I recover most of my gold that would otherwise wind up in my main stock pot, okay? And unfortunately, the liquid in there is so opaque you can't see to the bottom of it. But there's a good film of gold down there in the bottom of this stock pot. Um, and, you know, I just let it build up in there. And then I'll dump the liquid off periodically into the main stock pot and process it through there. Which apparently I'm getting mostly PGMs and only a little bit of gold, which is good. That's fine. Because I'm getting a lot of gold out of this. So... Uh, maybe towards the end of the video, I will dump this out into the main stock pot and we'll see what's on the bottom of it. There was a pretty good film of gold there not too long ago before the liquid level got too high and too opaque to see the bottom. So, periodically, I just 
filter the gold out of this. I'll dump most of the liquid off and run what's left through a filter, capture that gold, process it next time I make aqua regia. Easy peasy. Don't have to go through all the hundred thousand steps I've gone through so far to process my main stockpot. So my system seems to be working. I'm getting most of my leftover gold out of here rather than out of my stockpot, which is what I wanted because the stockpot just just too many steps, too difficult to process. I don't want to do that very often. Okay, so let's move back over to dealing with the PGMs. All right, now that we've got the gold out of the way, not that they're with that much, but hey, it's always good to know. Got to test and see if the procedures I put in place are working to keep gold out of the stockpot. Looks like it's working. Okay. So in the future, when I process my stockpot, I'll just be planning on getting a lot of PGMs out of it, not a lot of gold. All right, that's fine. That's actually closer to the way Hope does it. So speaking of PGMs, we're back to this stuff. Now, this is the stuff that I, I got in episode two of this series where I boiled uh, the, the remains that came out of the stockpot after incineration in nitric acid. And this showed a really strong indication for palladium, okay? And I stopped boiling it in nitric acid at that point, but I'm thinking to myself, you know, that might not have been such a bad idea. I could have got a lot of the palladium out of the stuff that way. So, maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. Also, somebody left a comment about the possibility of there being some silver in this, and I hadn't thought about that. So maybe we should test it and see if there's silver in it. Now, this has been sitting here for about two weeks now. It's taken me a while to get to this point because I've had to wait for chemicals to arrive, I've had to wait for the weather to be good, I'm helping my stepson move, yada, yada, yada. So this has been sitting around for about two weeks. It's evaporated down a little bit, but it's developed a heck of a scum on top. I don't know what that scum is. So, but belatedly, we're going to test this for the presence of silver. So I've got some um, tap water here that I've added a splash of muriatic acid to. So let me get some of this green liquid from below the scum. Well, I would try to keep silver out of the stock pot too. And it's ever so slightly cloudy. Okay, so there's probably a little bit of silver there, but not a whole lot. All right, so that's good. So the stuff in the fume hood, the brown stuff that I've been boiling down, that was uh, treated with aqua regia. So if there's any silver in it, that should have cemented out as silver chloride at some point. So, okay, so we have a little bit of silver in here, but not a lot. So what am I going to do with this? Well, at some point I would like to recombine it with what's in the fume hood and process it. But I'm thinking uh, there's still a lot of nitric acid in here, probably. So I'm thinking what I'm going to need to do, really, is put some... I'm working off the top of my head here. Feel free to leave a comment if you think I'm screwing up. But I think I'm going to add some um, muriatic acid to this so that we can turn any palladium nitrate in here into palladium chloride and then evaporate this down to get rid of the nitric acid. Rehydrate it, filter it, and uh, add it to what's already in the fume hood there for processing to try and get the, the uh, PGMs out of it. That's what I'm thinking. It definitely needs filtered. It's got this scum on it. There was a little bit of sediment that came over too when I decanted it off. So yeah, it definitely needs filtering. If I uh, put some muriatic acid in it. Whatever silver is in there should come down as silver chloride, and we can filter that out too. So that's what I'm thinking. So, I mean, there's not enough silver in there to worry about. That's just a trace, okay? So, yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple hundred milliliters of muriatic acid to this, and we'll start evaporating this down like we're doing the other stuff in the fume hood. Um, at some point, we'll filter them both and combine them and uh, go on from there. That's what I'm thinking. Like I said, leave a comment if you think I'm screwing up or you got a better plan or you think I'm doing it right, let me know. So let's get started. Oh yeah, this is cooking down good. We are down to about, what is that, six, 600 milliliters or so? So yeah, that's good. It's about 
half of what we started with, maybe less than half. Okay, I'm going to let it go a little bit more. It's getting really concentrated, which is good, just what we need. So uh, over here, I'm going to add a couple hundred milliliters of muriatic acid to this. Yeah, there's all that sediment down there on the bottom of the beaker. Oh, does it get a color change when you do that? Yeah. Nice. So anyway, we'll be working with chlorides here in both these beakers, which is what I want. I'm going to put some heat to this, and I'm going to start evaporating it down like I've done with this. Uh, we'll see. I might need to evaporate this down to a syrup to get rid of any nitric acid in there and just just be left with uh, palladium chloride. So we'll see. And then uh, once this one's uh, evaporated down a little more, I'll just turn the heat off of it and wait until this one's ready and we'll combine them after we filter them. All right. So this is going to take a little while. Be back when it's ready to go. Well, I almost forgot that I said I'd show you guys what's inside my temporary stock pot, what's collected on the bottom of it. But to do that, first I've got to get that, you know, three gallons or so of opaque liquid off of what's in the bottom of it so we can see to the bottom. So I'm going to start up a new stock pot. Way back at the beginning of episode one, we drained all the stuff out of my stock pot. Well, everything's been going in the temporary stock pot since, and it's time to start a new stock pot. I'm going to start with a new bucket. The other bucket was getting a little ratty, so we'll start with a new bucket. Got some coils of copper wire. I put them down in there to uh, cement out any precious metals left in this liquid. Start the cycle all over again. So let me see if I can gently pour off this stuff without disturbing the stuff on the bottom too much until we can get a look at it. Yeah, that's about enough. Let me let that settle a bit and I'll give you a look down into the bucket there. In the meantime, we set this aside And we'll put this back in its normal home where I keep my stock pot, which is up right under here, out of the way. And uh, yes, a bubble's forming on the copper coils already, so it's already reacting. Um, here's the air bubbler that goes in my stock pot. Um, it's, it's a rubber hose, but the end of it has a glass tube on it. That's just the, the, the weight of the glass holds the tube on the bottom so that we get good bubbling, you know, otherwise the rubber tube just wants to float on top and that's no good. So we want to get good bubbling action, good good circulation. I'm going to put the lid on loosely, not tight, because the air has to flow out from the bubbler. And then a couple of rocks just to make sure the wind doesn't blow the, the lid off and rain gets in and dilutes the stuff. And now I just got to plug the bubbler in and hey, we're back in business. Yep, it's bubbling. All right. So, let's see if the stuff in the temporary stock pot has settled enough for you to look at it. Alright, so here's the bottom of my temporary stock pot after everything's had a chance to settle. See all that black powder down there? That is almost entirely gold. It's been, you know, a couple months since the last time I emptied this out and collected that powder. So it's had a chance to accumulate down there. So this is why I don't expect to get much gold out of my main stock pot because I'm collecting it all out of here before it goes in the main stock pot. I toss a spoonful of SMB in here every once in a while just to make sure I wring every last bit of gold out of the liquid that goes in here before it goes into the main stock pot. So basically we're just putting mostly PGMs into the main stock pot and a little trace of gold. Okay, I don't want to drop my phone in there because I'm sure that would be the end of it. Anyway. Let's get back to working on the PGM, speaking of them. 
All right, I shut everything down for the night after this had reduced by about half. And this is down to, I don't know, well below half of what we started with. But, uh, well, I got to thinking. You know, I asked you guys to let me know if you thought I was screwing up with this stuff. Well, I got to thinking overnight. I think I did screw up with it. I think I should have filtered it before I put the hydrochloric acid in there. Because that sediment on the bottom, well, there was probably some gold in that sediment. Because that sediment came over from before I extracted the gold. So when I put hydrochloric acid in here, I'm sure there was some residual nitric. We probably made uh, aqua regia, and we may have put some gold in solution. So let me get this out of here, and we'll test it with some stannous chloride and see what it looks like. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I forgot that that sediment came over before. I extracted the gold. And there might be a fair amount of gold in that sediment. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. If there's any gold there, I think it's just a trace. Um, when I put the stannous chloride in, it immediately went orange. And then over the next few seconds, it turned dark green. So I think we've got mostly palladium in there. If there's any gold, there's not much. But I think I'm going to stop reducing this. And we're just going to filter it. And then I also had another thought about whether I do want to combine this stuff with what's in the fume hood. Let me get that out. Initially, what I did was I took all the material that came from the stock pot and I boiled it in nitric acid. And this is the liquid that came off of that, the nitric acid boil. We got a lot of palladium out, but apparently pretty much just palladium. Okay, maybe some silver too, a little bit of silver. So this material, um, after that nitric acid boil, I took it straight to aqua regia and we got the gold precipitated out of this stuff. Okay, now there's still a little sediment in here that might contain some gold, but it didn't go into solution after I put hydrochloric acid in here, which I'm a little surprised about. So, the thing is, this has had a nitric acid boil. So any copper that was in here is probably now in here, which might be part of the reason why the color is so strong. So this might have copper in it. This probably doesn't have much of any copper in it. Um, so I'm really not sure I want to combine them because I would be polluting this with copper if I do. What I really need to do is test this stuff for copper. In fact, I need to test both of them for copper. Um, I don't have any ammonia on hand. I will go to the grocery store later today and get some ammonia and we will test this stuff before we move on with it. Uh, and while I've got everything set up, I guess I might as well do a stannous chloride test on this stuff and see what it looks like. Well, let's have a look at this stuff. There's a little bit of sediment on the bottom, which I suspect is more gold that's come out of solution. Put a little bit in this spot plate here. Okay. Now that went very dark orange, very dark orange. That is super dark though. Um, you know, I'm a little bit in uncharted territory dealing with PGMs because there's never been enough in my stock pot before to worry about. But this time there is. Let me do that again. We'll do it on camera here. We'll zoomed in. Let me put a little less stannous on it. Yeah, that that went super dark orange. And then it went basically black. So it's possible. Didn't get all the gold out of here. That's possible. I don't know. Um, certainly some more gold, I think, has precipitated out on the bottom of this thing. Not a lot. Just, just a light dusting. But it's possible there's still some more gold in here. Um, 
or this could just be a super concentrated solution of PGMs now, which is what I'm thinking it certainly is, super concentrated in PGMs. I'm not going after the gold. We're going to leave the gold in there because I've gone to all the trouble of concentrating this stuff. Um, we need concentration to get the PGMs out. I'm not going to dilute it again to get the gold out because we were talking in the last video about you know, Hoke talks about how PGMs like to precipitate out of concentrated solutions and gold likes to precipitate out of dilute solutions. So this is really concentrated now, both of these. So I think we will go after the PGMs in them. And then if there's any gold left after we get those out, we'll drop the gold again. Maybe we'll get a little bit more gold out of this stuff. Because I have to say... A little under two grams was slightly disappointing, even though I have been seriously trying to keep the gold out of my stock pot. All right, so let me go get some ammonia solution at the, at the grocery store, and we will test these for the presence of copper. All right, so I went to the grocery store, got some ammonia. So let's test this stuff for copper. All right. Ammonia is a very, very sensitive test for copper. We don't need much material either. Just a little tiny drop there. It's kind of windy. It keeps blowing my pipettes around. Put a little ammonia in here. Oh, yeah. See that blue color? Oh, yeah. So this green liquid clearly has some copper in it. Okay, I was thinking that was probably going to be the case because I gave this material a boil in nitric acid and this is the first liquid that came off. So any copper that was left in it probably wound up in there. Let's see about this stuff. A little more than that. Some ammonia on it. And now this is just straight non-sudsy ammonia. It's very, very slightly blue. Very, very slightly blue. There's hardly any blue color there at all. I don't even know if it's showing up. Maybe a little bit. But yeah, very, very slightly blue as opposed to this very blue. So this stuff... So this stuff has almost no copper in it. And this stuff has a fair amount of copper in it. So I'm not sure I want to mix them now. I really don't think I want to mix them because this is probably pretty concentrated with palladium and maybe has some platinum in it too. But it's mostly copper free, which is nice. I don't have to deal with that. This over here is pretty rich in palladium, but it also has some copper in it. So, yeah, I'm not sure I want to mix them. So I'll have to give a little bit of a rethink to how I want to process this stuff. But the first thing I think I need to do is I need to filter this stuff. Get the sediment out of it. Get the gold or whatever is on the bottom of this thing out of it. And then get the sediment that's on the bottom of this out of it. There's probably some silver chloride. Whatever sediment came over earlier when I decanted this liquid off. Probably some gold in there. I wouldn't be surprised. So let me get set up for filtration. And we'll clean this stuff up. And then we'll move on. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this. i got my vacuum filtration set up here. Plug it in and start the pump. So, I don't want to get this green liquid in with this brownish orange liquid. But I'm not worried about getting a little bit of this in there. Because they're both pretty much the same thing other than this one's contaminated with copper. This one might have a little bit of platinum in it, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe not much. It might have some gold still dissolved in it, hard to say. But I don't want to contaminate this stuff with copper. Because it's pretty copper free, except for a trace. It was very slightly blue when I tested it, but it was only slight. And I don't know if you can see that sediment on the bottom. We got some gold there, maybe some other stuff. Yeah, look at the... Yeah, that sediment is bright red, okay? Yeah. So I'm thinking that ain't gold. 
That is platinum or palladium salts of some sort. Okay. Not sure I want to throw that out. Not sure I want to go in the filter. I was thinking that sediment was some sort of, uh, was, was maybe some gold, but not looking like it. That is looking like we've got some platinum or palladium salt there. That is really bright red. I'll give you a close-up look at that. Yeah, check that out. Look at that neon red color we got in there. All right. So this is some sort of platinum or palladium salt. I'm going to set this aside. I am not going to dump it into this filter. Um, because, you know, one of the next steps is going to be, well, precipitating this stuff. Well, I've already got some precipitated here. I might as well hold on to it, right? All right. So I guess I don't need to reduce this anymore if stuff's starting to come out of solution. All right. Let me get back to uh, this filtration. Okay, so I'm going to wash this really bright red salt out of here into another beaker and just hold on to it. Let me give the inside of this beaker a good wipe and we'll dump this liquid back into it. Yeah. I don't know. That stuff going back into solution in some water. It's looking like it. Looking like it's going back into solution, or is it just suspended in the water? I'm not certain. Tilt this a little bit. I guess it's mostly just suspended. Fine particles. It's coming back out. Let's see if I can pour off some of this liquid. And, uh, well. I mean, not too much. I'm not sure I want to dry the salt out. That might not be a good idea. Maybe I'll pour off some of that liquid. But let me get this beaker cleaned up so we can put this liquid back in it. Yeah, just about all the liquids pulled through. The drips are coming through really slowly. But we've got a little bit of that red salt in the filter up here. Not very much. Most of it's down here in this little beaker. But... Uh, you know, we've got a little bit of it up here. Not enough to worry about. I don't think this filter is probably going to go with my filter and rag storage once I am done with the filtration. Yeah, so you guys leave a comment. Let me know what you think this uh, bright neon red uh, precipitate is. Platinum chloride salt or palladium chloride salt or a mixture of the two. Let me know what you think. I've changed my mind. I don't need the tall form beaker anymore, I don't think. So we're going to put it in this 2-liter beaker once the dripping is done. This little shorter beaker is going to be easier to deal with in the fume hood. So we'll just let the vacuum pull some more liquid through that filter. And then once it's done dripping, I'll transfer the liquid from in there into this beaker. Come on, last drop, last drop. Come on. You can do it. Don't just hang there. It just wants to hang there. Okay. It's been hanging there for quite a while. There we go. That got it. Okay. I'm going to stick this over here for the moment. Like I said, I'm not worried about contaminating this stuff with this stuff. It's the other way around that I'm worried about. We went to a lot of trouble to concentrate this stuff, so I'm not going to wash out the inside of this flask with anything. I'm just going to try and get as much of it out as I can. And then since I'm not worried about contaminating the green stuff with the brown stuff, we're just going to filter the green stuff into the same flask and through the same filter. And we're going to capture all this goop on the bottom of this beaker, which I don't know what all of it is. Some of it may be gold, some of it just insoluble crud, some of it probably silver chloride. But I don't want it moving on through the process.
Yeah, some of this stuff looks like silver chloride, which I'm not surprised about. There was a little bit of silver. We tested it earlier. There was a little bit of silver in this stuff. All right, so once this filtration is done, I'll clean this beaker, and we'll put this liquid back in it. And then on to further processing. Well, again, we've got a hanging last drop problem, but this stuff is good to the last drop. So oh, there it fell with the when I shook the beaker. All right, good. Or shook the flask. Yeah, this stuff's good to the last drop, so I want to get every bit of it. Which coffee used that uh, that slogan, good to the last drop? I'm not a coffee drinker, or I'd probably know that. I'm a tea drinker. I guess I'm really channeling my English ancestors with that, like in tea over coffee. Okay, again, I am not going to rinse the last little bit of liquid out of this flask. I will rinse it into my temporary stock pot, but I don't want to dilute this liquid that I've gone to the trouble of concentrating. In fact, I think I might concentrate this a little bit more before moving on to the next step. I mean, this brown-orange stuff over here has clearly been concentrated enough already. Ooh, the wind is going to blow my watch glasses off. It's so potent. But this brown orange stuff has clearly been concentrated enough that we're starting to get stuff out of solution here. So I don't think I need to concentrate it anymore. But this stuff, you know, I put about 200 milliliters of muriatic acid in it the other day, and then I've concentrated it down. But it's only about 100 milliliters more concentrated than I started with. So I think I need to put this back on the heat and reduce it by another 50%, maybe, before moving on to the next step. So the next steps, well, they're going to be pure hoke, absolutely pure hoke, from her book and on her chapter on getting PGMs out of your stock pot liquids. So that's where we're going to go. Um, the chemicals have finally arrived. We've got to the point where we are basically ready to go after the platinum and palladium. And I'm thinking that's going to be a pretty involved process, so we'll pick up in the next video with that. So I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see future videos. There'll be at least one more in this series, maybe more, plus lots of other gold and silver recovery videos coming down the pike all the time. So subscribe to see those future videos. Check out my two other channels. ElectroGeek64, which is where all my electronics and retro computing stuff, and Mike's Lapidarian Fossils, where all my uh, rock hounding, rock hunting, rock polishing, fossil hunting, fossil prep stuff is. So check those out. Like and subscribe there too if you wouldn't mind. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.